r slash shower thoughts. Exporterof Gold says. Vampires have no excuse to be poor, because they've had eons to perfect the art of making money. Ilad532 says. What about a vampire that just got turned last week, and he was a liberal arts major fresh out of college with a part-time job at Quizness? The Disgratist says. Derek got a job at a gas station. He's a vampire not a thief. Flower and Cats General says. Once you turn into a vampire, do you still have to pay back your student loans? Asking for a friend. I am Jackson McCullen says. It was so much easier before computers and know your customer banking regulations when you could just say, I'm I am Jackson McCullen's son. Isn't the resemblance striking? Anyway, he died and left me in his will. Nowadays if you want to be a vampire for more than half a century, you pretty much have to be involved in a sophisticated forgery, fraud or money laundering operation, and those have non-trivial costs, which means you have to do something more lucrative than sitting in a box and letting interest accrue. XL129 says. Or you set up a trust. Most rich people would trust funds of vampires. Beepboo op 826 says. You could just have invested at the beginning of the stock market, because you know you've had like 200 years for it to compound and grow. Mansmoth at 69420 says. But like, aren't they extremely rich in pretty much every media they're portrayed in, at least Dracula type immortal vampire, not sci-fi? XL129 says. The vampire and the iconic interview with the vampire seem pretty hobo to me. Brindigo says. They don't even need to know how they have probably just been taking pocket change from the people they drained for several hundred years. If you don't need to pay for food or utilities and you are constantly surprising people to steal their life force you may as well take their wallet. Bebaf Budger says. Humans have no excuse to be poor, because they've had decades, to perfect the art of making money. r slash shower thoughts. Practicumum07 says. People can traumatize you, and ruin your life, yet you're the one who has to pay for therapy to try, and be better again. If only there was a way to measure how someone can give you PTSD, it'd be sending my mill a large bill for my 6 years of therapy. Mackenzie Post 26 says. I've gone through so much horrible shit in my life, but I have never once used that as an excuse to hurt people. Hurting someone is the last thing I would ever want to do, it frustrates me so much when people break someone's heart, or hurt them, and say it's because I'm going through a lot. Everyone is going through a lot, my therapy better be paid for, and they might as well get some for themselves or mayo. White underscore collar underscore devil says. Hurt people hurt people. Not an excuse, but your mill probably went through some shit of her own, and never got therapy to deal with it. I had an ex that exploited my issues to the point where I just couldn't function. I was lucky enough to realize therapy, and not drugs or something, might help. I actually thanked her for that when I broke up with her. She was not pleased. DM underscore me underscore pics underscore of underscore her underscore d0g says. Okay but like for me, they don't deserve the bill. TW, I'm 21. My little sister, 12 at the time. Struggled with an eating disorder during COVID and my parents left me to deal with her because they still worked away from home and we were all in school. I was trying to do college during COVID and every day for a year I needed to hold my little sister as she screamed she wants to kill herself, needed to find her as she's self-harming, needed to take exams while she has constant panic attacks in my room. I'd spend hours every night talking to her to calm her down. Finally getting sleep, only to wake up to her screams about her freaking out over her body. I hate to say it, but when she was finally hospitalized the quiet was so nice. I tried to support her, but I couldn't. I left home again, and I can't do school right anymore, I just can't do it, I feel like I'm broken. 
I'm so close to finishing that I can't get good grades at all anymore. I'm on a short break, but I feel so awful, I dk if I can do it. I used to be able to get straight A's, I was a great student, but now my GPA is tanked, and it feels really useless. I can't hear girls scream, or else I start freaking out, when I see a girl's face start to cry I break down. I have panic attacks in public when something triggers me, so I live my life in almost constant dissociation. I love her. She deserves the world. But she broke me, and made my college experience awful, but she doesn't need to know that. Apps at all source says. And god forbid you suggest a significant other could use some therapy. Currently dealing with a spouse who has anger management issues, abandonment trauma, and possible ad or bipolar IDK. What I do know, is I have no idea how to be around them, when they go from 0 to 100 in 2 seconds flat, because the temperature is a couple degrees warmer than they'd like it to be as they wake up in the morning. Or because I didn't do the exact right thing, or say the exact perfect phrase as they're directing their anger at me. I'm always the first one to apologize, oftentimes the only one, and it's to the point where I think I'm the one who needs therapy. When you can't even set appropriate boundaries, because trying to remove yourself from the situation triggers their abandonment trauma, so now you're leaving them for good, and she can have you, and, frick, off and all that. r slash shower thoughts. Specialist underscore mind 6070 says. There must be at least one person who doesn't realize their phone has a flashlight and turns up the screen's brightness to illuminate their surroundings. Edit. Obviously some people do this on purpose. The point is that there must be at least one oblivious person who doesn't realize that they have an actual flashlight. Sgtwitterkey says. iPhones didn't have a flashlight button for years. You used to have to download a third party app to turn on the flashlight. Kajeb Jajan says. It just occurred to me teens nowadays will probably learn about the flashlight on a camera, and think it predates a flashlight, just because of the name. I wonder if the tool was named after cameras and the flash build used in the early 20th century? Shit did I just boomer myself? Bon Job says. In some parts of the English world, a flashlight is called a torch. Imagine not knowing what an actual torch is, but calling the light on your phone one. Real torches are one thousands of years old tech. Deepchill78 says. Or. Oh. It's just faster and easier to wake the screen for the two seconds you need a bit of light, to stumble through the darkness. Cavamanta says. I really like the light output of my always on display. It puts out a nice glow that is handy for getting around my room at night. Pitchiel289 says. I've got a motor at a edge, it's not great, but I can shake it, and the flashlight comes on. Smackes says. I do this all the time as to not wake up anyone for producing too much brightness. F underscore Ensis says. Yeah I remember my first iPhone didn't have a flashlight at all. You had to download a flashlight app which was basically a white screen and you had to turn new brightness all the way up. Goosages01 says. I was one of these people, until I found out my phone lets me change the flashlight brightness, if I hold down the icon. Tal extension 9312 says. Once I saw someone turn on the phone screen, and illuminate their watch to tell time. Ramanhood Les1 says. Fun fact, that used to be me, I used to not know, that my phone had a flashlight. Since, I have been enlightened, literally and figuratively. r slash shower thoughts. 8-bit Pete says. The day will come, when people will find it hard to believe we were actually allowed to drive cars ourselves. Olympus underscore, Mon says. Yes, I think the same thing. Car police chases will be a thing of the past. Police will have the ability to disable your car in the future. Maleficent level 2740 says. 
when I was your age grandson, stick shift cars with no seat belts or airbags was the way to go. Shinobi500 says. I had a related shower thought, if motorcycles were a recent invention, they definitely would not have been legal. Ethel Rake says. Please. These frick, I idiots can't drive. I need the cars to drive themselves do I don't feel like someone's gonna run me off the road or flip my car because they're a blind old boomer. Cardcom says. I already believe that. I mean, barreling down an undivided road while cars head almost straight for you and all you have is your faith that a stranger won't veer over and hit you. It's frick, I'm nuts. Upstairs P7868 says. 100%. We will, faster than anyone is ready for underscore be facing a serious moral dilemma of human v computer safety records. It will become unconscionable to let people drive. Duane East says. That day seemed very near and now it feels very very far away again. Zixpadkatin and asks says. I've always loved Heenlean's rant about cars from the Rolling Stones, despite their great sizes and tremendous power spaceships are surprisingly simple machines. Every technology goes through three stages, first a crudely simple and quite unsatisfactory gadget, second, an enormously complicated group of gadgets designed to overcome the shortcomings of the original, and achieving thereby somewhat satisfactory performance through extremely complex compromise that, and our proper design therefrom. In transportation the cart and the railboad represent the RST stage of technology. The second stage may well be represented by the automobiles of the middle 20th century just before the opening of interplanetary travel. These unbelievable museum pieces were for their time fast, sleek, and powerful, but inside their skins were assembled a preposterous collection of mechanical buffoonery. The prime mover for such a juggernaut might have rested in one's lap, the rest of the mad assembly consisted of afterthoughts intended to correct the uncorrectable, to repair the original basic mistake into sign for automobiles and even the early aeroplanes were powered, if one may call it that, by reciprocating engines. A reciprocating engine was a collection of miniature. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.